The McElroy brothers are not experts, and their advice should never be followed. Travis insists he's a sexpert, but if there's a degree on his wall, I haven't seen it. Also, this show isn't for kids, which I mention only so the babies out there will know how cool they are for listening. What's up, you cool baby? It's familiar, but not too familiar, but not too familiar. Welcome to My Brother, My Brother, Me, an advice show for the modern era. I'm your oldest brother, Justin McElroy. I'm your middlest brother, Travis McElroy. I'm your baby, Griffin McElroy, Candle Knights, 20 Flirt. And I'm Charlie Dickens, aren't I? Now listen, nice. why I'm would you think Charles Dickens would be a child? Charles Char- Dickens is like a grown-ass man. I'm Charlie Dickens. Charles. I have yet to write any of the books you might recognize. No, I'm, right now I mostly just look at girls and get bonus. I'm an established author, loved around the Christmas time holiday, don't I? Um, I am tremendously sorry that we started out the episode with Travis saying the word bonus. Like, we warned you, there's not going to be any curse words, just challenging ideas, challenging material. Sort of like an Oliver Twist when you have no. to learn about orphans, don't you? <laughs> the challenging topic of orphans. It is challenging. <laughs> Deal Fe- with it. Fagin's sort of vaguely anti-Semitic, isn't he? Um, Sorry about that, Fagin. It was a different time, wasn't And none it? of that has anything to do with Christmas. Like, he uh, wrote uh, a book about I Christmas. Chris- Christmas songs, the book, it's about free ghosts, isn't it? Should we paint the picture of where what we're doing? Because I, I'm looking at the I'm levels right now. I'm four feet tall, and I've got a tear stove pipette, and I'm on Justin's lap. I wasn't online. looking for, like, an ASL situation. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I want you to envision. There's three of us jammed around two microphones. Three of us, so did Justin leave? Or? He's, he's, <laughs> Justin became embarrassed. He stepped out to give me my paraffin wax so I can roll my cigarettes. Oh, on. God bless. You are way too young to be getting into it. Because, like, cigarettes back in the day were, like, heavy doge. We well, said everybody died sooner, didn't they? So we started smoking at seven or eight. We're in the meat space together the physical presence of each other i don't think we've done this since god spaghetti geddon and that was a in my defense i'm a ghost that was a disaster <sighs> you are not taking up much corporeal space <laughs> i'm very tiny except for my hat um, the, the, the hat is real my the body head, is not it's like ai real. but weirder you listen to 20 flirt Chris, 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 christmas i don't even know what that word was it just left Can- my lips candle nights is candle the, night. is candle the episode you're looking for uh, share it with a friend share it with family no swears no curses no fouls no wordy dirds no, no cussing no wordy, i mean there will be and we will try to edit them it's gonna be hard because we're all on the same mix and that is as you editors out there know kind of a tough putt yeah but we will we will do our very best uh we've got a lot of holiday themed uh, fun questions for you. I, you know, what's so strange is we are in we are actual brothers. A lot of people ask us that we are actually brothers. But I find when making this show, I find your guys' physical presence here highly <laughs> distracting. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's weird because now you guys are going to know how little I actually pay attention when I'm not speaking. Uh, that's not. No, I think we're oh, pretty. Not going to shock pl- anybody. We're <laughs> pretty plugged in on that. Yeah, on that end. Um, um I watched very recently the Pee Wee's Playhouse Christmas special and I was wondering if it would be possible for us to um, match it for like the having the weirdest guest stars on this podcast. I watched that last year for the first time in forever and it is weird it's got who all Grace Jones shows up does what she does which is to say creeps me out to the extreme the Andrew sisters are on it or some sort of set of triplets some some triplet set not the Andrew sisters they'd be long dead some sort of set of triplets is there um Little Richard shows up. If Little Richard serves. is definitely in the mix. There's a chair that talks. Well, I mean, Cherry's a permanent fixture there. <laughs> Cherry shows up. Surprise. How hard would it be for us to get Grace Jones just like on on the set? Who is Grace Jones? Grace Jones was in. Well, she was in Mad Max, and I think a James Bond movie. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, you know, gotcha. gotcha. Um, so uh, let's actually get into some questions so we can help. Now, I do want to apologize in advance again. Just want to repeat, Travis and I are sharing a microphone. Uh, kissing, so, kissing between every sentence. Yeah, uh, don't say that. Kissing gross. brothers. Just real quick, I need you two to look at this picture of Grace Jones I just found. 
Sweet. Okay, and perfect. We can move on. Moving we're on. We're in a good headspace. All right. Uh, here's a question. Hey, brothers, my boyfriend comes from a country where Christmas isn't really celebrated, and we're spending our first holiday together outside of America. How can I help him understand all the magical feelings surrounding the holidays? Should I plan some activities or just have him binge watch Christmas movies? <laughs> Please help. That's from Santa in South Korea. The binge watching only works if you put him in a chair that has like metal clamps that hold his yeah. eyes open and you're just screaming like, jingle, jingle. Now, when they say that Christmas isn't really celebrated in South Korea, do they actually mean that it is celebrated, but for like only the last two weeks of December and not for three and a half months? Like it <laughs> they is don't, in the no, South. everyone just does it very lackadaisically. They're just like, oh, Merry Christmas, I guess. I guess, whatever. Um, uh, I mean, the, the obvious answer is to just jump that jump that gap, the Christmas gap, jump right over that land, right in Candlelight. It's obviously the superior territory to be. Um, but if, you, if you're committed to the the, the Christian uh, version of Candle Nights, um, I, I think you could get somewhere by showing him some holiday films that are more sort of humanist rather than, than they are like the magic of uh, like Santa showing up at the last minute, like he always does in sitcoms. Like, if you're to show him, I mean, like, I don't think there's a human being alive who cannot be touched by, for instance, It's a Wonderful Life. You watch that, and I think the the magic of the holiday season, what everybody's on about, you know, which is really at its core about generosity and mm-hmm. kindness and and human warmth. I think something like that could help. Or what you could do was lie to him. Because this is your opportunity to create a bunch of Christmas traditions that do not really exist. Or just but, make it make it an extremely Krampus-oriented affair. Well, that's the thing. It's just occurred to me that what you can do is pick and choose. Because throughout the world, every different country and society has different is there a like, bad, Christmas is there traditions. A December Christmas? 23rd, you have to give your... Uh, girlfriend foot rubs. That's the that's an old or Santa will come down and eat your back. <laughs> and there's stuff like. <laughs> <laughs> well, I I heard tell that every Christmas, whoever hasn't taken out the garbage every week for yeah. the history of time, will have his balls cut off. <laughs> well, that's not accurate. That's not true at all. Like, the back eating thing is that's lore. That's that's that's, that's yeah. Welsh, I believe, in origin. <laughs> What's the one where you have to put eggs in your shoes and stomp on them? Have you noticed how Welsh holidays almost always involve the figure for that holiday coming down to consume some non-vital part of your body for strength? You gotta keep it. There you go. All right. Uh, well, Travis lowered my chair, <laughs> and now it's broken, which is great. You broke my chair. This is a pretty good scene. If the chair is broken. <laughs> <laughs> it's not. It's not a setting. It's broken. <laughs> it was actually a setting. I fixed it. Um, okay. So, uh, I. I mean, the other thing is, I don't know if his tastes are acclimated. If he comes from another country, I'm not sure if he's going to be ready for the amount of like sugar and butter. Oh, that's a good call. We're about to jam down his gullet. You may want to start with something a little more savory, maybe a mince mince meat pie or something like that. Can you make a Christmas kimchi? Is that possible? That would be nice. You know what? What about a blending of you replace um, imagery from uh, the holidays with and like basically Photoshop in, but really not fake. Like actually insert some South Korean image. Maybe like a you have a picture of Santa, but behind him there's a dead girl crawling on the ceiling. I am not very inundated in Yeah, dog, that's I not know. great. That's not ideal. That was bad. Can you, you know, that kind of idea. We're I, talking about an entire country. You can't think of a thing? I'm. They're not the bad one. I know that. Yeah. Oh, jeez. You know what, though? I could probably come up with more North Korean imagery. Uh, uh, well, well, let's just assume that. Then. Okay, well. <laughs> it's really a shame that 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 the northern korea gets all of the credit for being the bad girl you know what i mean it's like it's like the girl in the bachelorette that he keeps around mm-hmm. for ratings and he doesn't realize that the right answer is right in front of him ben what are you doing you made the worst call of your entire life yeah uh griffin how about a how about a yahoo how's that sure. sound? A, a christmasy sort of holiday candlelight yahoo let me close all these naked pictures of grace jones that popped up <laughs> when I Googled. i'm good what? don't show me naked pictures of grace jones i didn't want to it's just what came That's up when really I, upsetting i'm a married man um how about this this one was sent in by drew davenport thanks drew davenport it's by yahoo answers user this tumblr oh who asks I always have a hard time falling asleep on Christmas Eve because I'm excited. Mm-hmm. 
any tips on how I can fall asleep faster or relax or something. Okay. I had this problem a lot growing up. There, I can think of one where I thought that I didn't, uh, I, I didn't fall asleep at all. I think I had one Christmas Eve where I, I feel like I didn't. You just sleep rocked the mic from from dusk till dawn. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no sleep till Santa. Um, there was one year I remember Griffin and I had bunk beds. Um, it was last year, <laughs> and Griffin and I had crusty, bunk beds, and I was like laying in the bottom beds. bunk thinking. If I raised up fast enough, I bet I could bash my head on the top bunk hard enough to knock myself unconscious till Christmas morning. What is good is to think about all the children in, like, developing nations that aren't going to have a Christmas this year. Because, like, that really helps to counterbalance. You know the song, Do They Know It's Christmas Time at All? If you, like, meditate that on that song, the worst. I think it will counterbalance your mm-hmm. excitement to, be, like, to get you to an even keel. Or maybe just pop a couple zannies and have a nice big glass of scotch. Yeah, maybe just crunch down some zanny bars. <laughs> maybe leave a couple for Ho-Ho and have a couple for yourself. You know, just because it's Christmas Eve doesn't mean you can't party like it's Christmas. You know what I mean? Nice ambient trip. You want to see Santa? You can see Santa. You can see Santa. You'll see some sugar plums. And you can see Santa. And what's that? Oh, no, he's turning into a lizard. Oh, and he's angry. Shh, shh, shh. Run away. Come here, Jim Jim. I made you these edibles. <laughs> Come here, Jim. It's Christmas Eve. You got sugar plums in your head. You can't sleep. Eat these Eat these brownies daddy made. <laughs> I I um actually had one year where I had to, to deliver newspapers. So I had to stay up till the middle of the night because they put them out earlier for the for the paper boys we would be asleep for some part of Santa's visit. Um, and I remember watching Beavis and Butthead in my room waiting for the papers to arrive. There's not a joke here. It's just a, tra- <laughs> it's a it's sad, just a treasured holiday memory that I remember. You guys, you guys ever had to work on Christmas? Sometimes you have to work on Christmas. Sometimes. No. Um, I worked at a Blockbuster. Oh and my God! Why would they? Who would? Everyone. The answer is everyone. The question that you're asking is who, and the answer, as it turns out, is everyone. Everyone. On, it's the second busiest day. Uh, you're, after, you are kidding me. No, no because I, this is my theory. Let me paint a picture. You wake up, all the presents are open, and it's like 1230 in the afternoon, and you realize, oh, no, now I just have to deal with these people for the rest of the day. That's exactly it. i got to go get a do SpongeBob you, movie but do you know, or something. Do you know what the busiest day of the year is? And This this was shocking. Is it going to bum me out, too? No. It, it's, it's My birthday? My birthday. No, New Year's Eve. Was the sh- was the busiest video rental day? Third- well, because you got to get videos for the kids to watch while the parents party downstairs. I think that's exactly it. Third is uh, near uh, is Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving's mm-hmm. huge too. Uh, one time on New Year's Eve, we were open till midnight. Oh, uh, fun! Uh, so no. wait, you, cl- you closed right as you counted? They couldn't let you go five minutes early, so maybe you could like hop on no. your bike and scoot home. No dice there. Did watch on a little TV with rabbit ears. Uh, with with uh, my coworkers Carl and Jimmy, who farted on me once. <laughs> what the hell is that his full name? <laughs> Jimmy. Jimmy. Uh, was he? Wait. Was he? Was he Native American? J- Jimmy. <laughs> Jimmy walks in toots. No, Jimmy would drop would drop things behind him and ask me to pick them up. And then when I would bend over to pick them up, he would fart on my head. He's like on your like, like champion. On your head. Yeah, he would fart though? on my head. And he Jimmy got fired because he uh not for head farting? There was a second thing he did? <laughs> no. <laughs> he also embezzled. He no, he, he embezzled. He, HR started riding his jock for all the toots and they caught <laughs> there was some other there was some other sh- stuff in that lint trap. No, what actually happened is is he inhaled half of a helium tank oh, man. from the back room and knocked himself out. <laughs> I don't do unconscious. But his, his farts were so high pitched the next day. Mm-hmm. Uh, we actually, no, uh, when we, I closed New Year's Eve that one night, we were there till midnight ringing in the new year with my other employees. And yes, don't worry, there was one sad woman browsing romantic comedies at the stroke of midnight. Uh, was just oh, ringing in the new year. What did she rent? With Dylan McDermott. Was there a moment where she looked down at her watch and was just like, oh. <laughs> oh. Well. My New Year's resolution, more of the same. My, uh, I think she ended up bringing my best friend's wedding, uh, which, oh. is, which is ironic because both the ideas expressed in that title would be completely <laughs> foreign to her. Uh, how about another question? Candle Knight, do we curse in there? I don't know. I don't know either. I don't think so. Candle Knight's question. For the past two years, I have worked in a small business with my boss and his wife. We're all fairly close, and I've always Can exchanged- you drop the 
the radio MC like because to- it's like hello welcome to Christmas radio right that's what I'm saying this is it's like something it's, it's something just about a, the leaning over to get to the microphone right it's like, but it's the three of us and we're brothers and we're like all together and like people like people oh. like these apps because it's Stop like we're kissing me cash. brother we kisses kiss each other let's do one cheek at the same time okay you're right come in here <laughs> I don't like Mwah. it I don't like it daddy for the past two years I've worked in a small business with my boss and his wife. We're all fairly close, and I've always exchanged Kaylin Lights gifts. Always is kind of... First That's, of all, this is a relatively new invent. Like, we are yeah. not going to say that, like, people were celebrating this stuff in, like, 300 AD. Like, this is a, this is a modern, this is yeah. a fresh holiday. So you didn't always exchange it. And it's so. copywritten, so... Ten months ago, we hired someone new, and I'm worried there's going to be some awkwardness. Should I explain to him that we always exchange gifts so he doesn't feel left out? If so... What can I get my employers that is nice while also not trumping his present? And that uh, says happy candle nights from Stumped in Sydney. Well, I mean, the the real answer is you got to do a gift exchange. And it sounds like there's four people here and everybody gets a present for somebody else. And that way everybody gets a present and no one's competing with anyone else. But the but, real answer is you're competing with his new employee. And you've got to trump him because the alternative is he trumps you. And do you, you is that listen, what you in this economy, one of you is going to get fired in 2014. Yeah, and you want it to be 10 month job. We've been pretty bullish on 2013, but let's not like, let's not kid ourselves. 2014 is going to be like, we are, we're going to get through this one by a thread, mm-hmm. I yeah. think. Yes. We're all going to be hanging. You guys might end up having to eat 10 month Johnny. Yeah. And you want to make sure, maybe get him some, some foods going to fatten him up. Maybe real quick. some muscle milk. <laughs> yeah. How about. Blow it out. Blow how, out his lats. Can we come up with the Candle Knights stipulation in the bylaws mm-hmm. stating that every present exchange that happens under the Candle Knights umbrella must be somehow. Um, contractually agreed upon by all parties involved in the exchange vis-a-vis uh, uh, price points, uh, maybe supplied receipts. Yeah, following. we want it to be as clinical as possible. It has to be because nothing it nothing is worse than like uh, me and our, our, I feel like all of us and our, our, uh, our step-siblings have this issue of getting each other presents on every other year and with this odd tango where we will get them stuff and then they'll get they won't get us so stuff well, and, which is like cool which is like i not making a big deal out of it I, I honestly don't care about getting stuff anymore it's the dance it's the dance of like well you didn't get me stuff last year and they're thinking like well they did get us stuff last year <laughs> switchy swap quantum leap into each other's bodies like we got you this nice <laughs> bottle of wine like i should have left uh, Damn it. if you had signed something if you had signed something we could have <laughs> gotten this together Everybody gets an empty box with another box inside of it, and then the next year you give that box back to somebody I else. Will be, well, that's candle I will be pro bono, al, al gratis. I will be the third party arbitrator for all of these contracts if that's what you want, because like I am really good at making sure that people don't like. I got you this scarf I knit. Cool. Here's a new iPad Retina Mini. Booyah! Like, that sucks. We do a gift exchange at CSC every year, and like, it wasn't. It wasn't bad this year. In fact, it was pretty great this year. But in the past, what's always happened is there's always one new person that no one's gotten to know very well, and they get their name, and it's like, I got you some Cincinnati Shakespeare t-shirts. Yeah. It's like, oh, thanks. I work here. I just saw them and thought of you. Here's three t-shirts from the place well, you work Well, if you out. get upset about that, then you're a child. Is there? I was not upset, but it's just like, if it's agreed what? upon, everybody you gets- You gotta talk into the mic. Everybody the gets a gift get card to place. Fandango. Is there, is there a market for an app? That you put, maybe it connects to Facebook, and it mm-hmm. says, "I'm buying gifts for these Public people." Public Santa. Public Santa is the name of the app. Okay, and they and Public Santa, you say, "I'm buying gifts for these people." Did they get me anything? Ooh. And Public Santa tells you yes or no, and then it gives you an approximate it's like dollar that value. App where you put down whether or not you want to have uh, intercourse with one of your friends, and then if they want to have intercourse with you, they have tagged you, and it will tell you if you have both. Exactly. It's exactly. That Why not just make like that. that the same app? <laughs> Did I get him a gift and do I have a shot? You're just one button press away from the worst holiday season of your life. And what's great the, is it only says yes or no, I but got, it doesn't say to which one. I got you, D- Daryl, I got you some delightful uh, artisanal jelly. Daryl, uh, okay, I'm going to leave. I got to go. I will be, I got the wrong, th- I have to change my underwear. I have to be right back. I was wearing my special sexual underwear that was going to be your gift. It was going to have a picture of a bow on it. I have made some mistakes here. There has to be some crossover too. So you can say like, I did get Daryl a present, Public Santa. And Public Santa's like, don't worry, he's not getting you a present. But, <laughs> but he would entertain the notion. Well, I think that you get, you get uh, Public Santa and then it's one letter off. 
maybe, for, for the sexual one. Maybe Public Santa, maybe Public Santa tells you if the person would ex- would accept sexual intercourse with you as a last resort <laughs> if you can't if you can't think of any other gifts. So eventually you get hard up enough. You've looked at everywhere. You've, and, you've been to TJ and TK Maxx for our UK friends, and you you can't find anything. And you're like, well, fine, be kind. Fine. Sexual and intercourse. Here's the best thing about Public Santa, because you have fed in the receipt. For the gift that you have bought, whenever you upload that you have bought this person he demands present proof. via via QR code, uh, because of technology, uh, maybe there's an NFC scan that goes on. This is all technology, um, and you don't plan on getting them a gift. You know that you can just give them like fifty two bucks thirty cents, mm-hmm. and then you have just bought something from them as a secondhand vendor. Right, it gone and consignment. Basically. It is gone consignment, and the the gesture, yes, is nullified. But so is the potential awkwardness. Public Santa, 2013, grab it on the App Store, it's $9.99. Don't, like, gift it to a friend, because then you're just being kind of a jerk about Uh it. And don't steal it just because we were too lazy to make it. Please cut us in on it when you actually do make this app. Please. It it could work for other holidays, too, I guess. Maybe. Can we get a more easily trademarkable name, like Gifto? Gifto. (laughs) Public Gifto. Why do you want to put public in there? Because it's not secret. It's public. It's out there. It's it's twenty dirt. We we got it out. Sorry for burping, everyone. That's gonna be tough to edit that one out. I <laughs> uh, got another question here. Happy Candle Nights, brothers. Hey, happy Candle. How naked is too naked around? I like Griffin. <laughs> for some reason, we're on the drive time radio show because we're all uh, like, hey, yeah, like call her, Christmas call her time go. is a special time of year. <laughs> call her, go ahead. Sometimes it's sometimes it's pretty rough, and here's a song for you. It's <laughs> Do They Know It's Christmas Around the Clock, because that's the only song I know how to play. Do I put that CD in, and then I broke off the CD. <laughs> Delilah. Uh, happy Candle Lights, brothers. How naked is too naked around family? I'm invited to a friend's for the holidays. I have no family here. And, well, last time I was there, his father opened the door wearing only his briefs. Mm-hmm. His sister came out of the shower with a towel around her waist. Mm-hmm. Nothing else. And his brother walked out of his room naked and said, hey, and held a short convo. You gotta go. <laughs> you gotta go. Hop in the Taurus and go. That's right, a Christmas song. Hop in the Taurus and go. <laughs> Your holidays are over now. Maybe if you swing by Golden Corral, there'll still be a few people there that you can exchange gifts with. I hope they want a pepper mill because that's what you bought. <laughs> I this is completely untenable. There is no question in my mind. If you're looking for some sort of societal reinforcement, uh, nervous about nudity, uh, that 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 this is not normal. It's not normal. It's Holy not right. Holy baby Jesus! I've just figured it out. Okay, here's my theory. Before you showed up to the house, their family got together and said, "I can't believe that Susan is bringing her friend from college. We were just gonna have a family Christmas. Well, how do we get him out of here? I know. I'll show up. I'll answer the door in just my briefs. And then the dad did it, and you didn't leave. And he was like, "I tried." And the daughter was like, "Okay, great. I'm I'm gonna go full bore. Just do the towel and have my my boobs out and everything." And he's like, "Still." didn't leave and older brother was like okay I'm gonna I'll take I'm it to the next level it. and then you still didn't leave and they're like well we're stuck with this her. is like the adult version of pretending your house is haunted so your parents can't sell it <laughs> basically <laughs> Um, I, so God knows what they're going to do this year when you show up. You show them they've just sacrificed a goat in the living room and they're just having come a- slather yourself <laughs> with blood where are you going you can eat the pancreas and you're like, well, I guess when in Rome, when in Rome, oh. not when in Rome. Even in Rome, they Even put on Rome, some clothes and they had company. Be like, come on, come guys, on, put it away. Th- oh, we, do we need all three? <laughs> uh, this is I. Now, here's the thing, though. You cannot. You cannot try to meet them on this. You cannot try to do more <laughs> Go nudity. Go toe to toe. To literally. Or maybe you do, because if they're trying to spook you, you need to be vigilant. You need to start peeling off layers. You need to, you need to start humming the bass With the line. most stone-faced look. Just what? Say something. I want you to hum the bass line of 311's Amber, because that's a very erotically charged <laughs> song. <laughs> mm. Maybe you could call the parents ahead of time and just say, like, just so I know, like, what is the deal over there this year? Did you guys get past that weird thing you were doing for a <laughs> what while? What are you into now? Maybe it's maybe it wasn't malicious though. Maybe this was just a perfect storm. No, the brother talking is like nope. it's like no, you got you guys, did he ask, pose awkwardly against the door frame? When you guys are alone, let me ask you a question. Was the conversation about how it's a little cold in here? <laughs> <laughs> when you guys are alone 
and and this is gonna get rippled so like and we're not gonna swear but again challenging thoughts when you guys are nude are you capable of doing anything except like the three or four things that you have to do to not be nude like for me it's i couldn't hold a conversation with somebody i couldn't like I couldn't. I can't brush my own hair until I'm not nude anymore. It's like this animal instinct of like, I'm defenseless. I need to put up my chitin of sweaters. Do you know what I mean? If if I could, I would set up a contraption right outside the shower that would allow that me would, to spring directly into being I, fully clothed. I, if my clothes could be shot onto me with some sort of clothes gun. <laughs> <laughs> I Griffin and uh, his wife Rachel are staying with us for the holidays. I woke up at four in the morning to go use the bathroom, and I put on a robe for that. Do you realize the the statistical unlikelihood that I would be seen even in my boxers? No, I'm putting on a robe. That that's how demure we are in the Mallory household. I hope it was four a.m. You said. Yeah. I hope you're wearing earmuffs too. <laughs> <laughs> Because it was cold outside. Candle Nights, Christmas special, very, very family-friendly episode. We would never talk about the thing you thought we talked about. How about another Yahoo, Griffin? How about another Yahoo? This Yahoo was sent in by Nick Key, or K. Thank you, Nick. I'm sorry, it's hard to read the screen. Uh, thank you, Nick. It's by Yahoo Answers user, Rawr, who asks, Rawr. What are you getting your horse? And then in parentheses, S. So either your singular horse or plural horses for What are you Christmas. getting your singularity horse? Okay, guys, I don't want to embarrass you all, but I would swear to God we talked about what you get a horse as a present. <laughs> Didn't we talk about what you no, get that a horse, was what if you got that a horse a, for a secret Santa? What yeah. if you got a horse for a secret Santa? Okay. Oh, did we really? We yeah. did. What did you get your horse? But this is for your own horse. You know this horse it's backward different. and forward. Yeah. Well, it also says, and your other animals, too. So for for dogs, they've gotten bones and a toy. Wow, really thought outside the box okay. on that one. Show the dog you know him. I uh, got you this Bill Bryson book. My three fish. Well, one needs more buddies because he's a schooling fish. The other two need buddies also and plants too to make them happy. I might also get a couple decorations. They're fish. They're fish. They're Can fish, I also throw fish. this out? If your fish needs these things to be happy, why are you waiting till Christmas? It doesn't understand that you're waiting till Christmas. It's just sitting going. I'm it so doesn't. Lonely. It doesn't understand being deprived. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I guess I'm just waiting for Christmas, a concept I fully grasp. <laughs> uh, last thing, my horse, I need new saddle pads. I want a new halter. That is not a present for the horse. Homemade You're treat. buying yourself horse accoutrement. To protect, Don't kid your, to protect your gins while you're doing this thing that the horse definitely hates. That's like saying, I, 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 Darla, I bought you a new backpack so you could carry my stuff around. Merry like Christmas. If, if your mailman stabbed you every yeah. time you dropped off your mail, you'd be like, Merry Christmas, mailman. I got you a bigger knife to stab me with. <laughs> Travis, it would be like getting someone a backpack to carry your stuff around, except by your stuff, you mean you. you. Darla, I got you a bigger backpack to put me in. I got in. you an adult Bjorn for me. <laughs> Let me just hop up in there. <laughs> You know what I noticed this year? You were too unladen with my girth. <laughs> You're walking a little too tall. Uh, I'm going to break you. 2014. Any recommendations for my barn friends? Last year I got them all gifts, uh, but $25 no. for five people is too much to spend. What do you recommend? Thanks for the help. Our barn friends, people they've murdered in the barn. <laughs> are these the ghosts of barn deaths? Or, or are barn friends the friends they've created in said barn? From murdering other people Out and sewing them together. Out of pieces of animals, no. <laughs> I think this are... is my barn friend, Alpig. Is that... <laughs> you know what I did here? The proportions are all off. These two animals are very differently sized. <laughs> I think I got him a gun and the courage to do what's right. I think these are actually uh, ter uh, terrible human-animal hybrids, Dr. Moreau style. <laughs> They've created and now live in the rafters. From the creators of Pound Puppies, it's Barn Friend. Oh, we're close. <laughs> oh. Our business is close. <laughs> Merry Christmas, I mean, Barn Friend. Kill us. Please, I'm a donkey man. Please call my children. Tell them where I am. Kill donkey man. Okay, Merry Christmas, donkey man. I know what man. you should get donkey man for Christmas. Kill donkey man. Kill donkay man. Also, oats maybe would be nice. <laughs> some, some artisanal stone-cut oats. Here's the thing. I'm gluten intolerant. <laughs> Kill donkey man. I'm allergic to donkeys, ironically. <laughs> um... Should we go to the money zone? It feels kind of crass to do that in candle nights. Not but. to me. I got to pay for these presents. I got you guys somehow. If your family's in town. You don't know what to do with them. It's okay. We we can we can relate. I don't I don't know what to do with these guys. We just just sit around chatting for a while. Then I'll this wait is our it out. Fourth podcast recorded just to kill time. Just, we threw yeah. the other three away. 
Uh, you, but, but here's the good news for you. You don't have to be like us. You tried Hulu.com. That's fine. But let, let me, why don't you elevate your game to Hulu Plus? You can uh, watch your favorite shows anytime, anywhere. Uh, SNL, Jimmy Kimmel Live, Shark Tank, Scandal, Backdated. Like you can binge on uh, Law and Order SVU, Lost, Doctor Who, Community. And they got original series too, like The Wrong Man's and Behind the Mask, which is a docu-series about what, Travis? It's about mascots, Justin, and the people inside of them. <laughs> the people inside the mascots. <laughs> the, this bar- is- the barn the barn friends. The barn the sports friends. world. This is basically an insane amount of entertainment for $8 a month. Uh-oh. Binge on old favorites or catch a movie. And here's the best part about it. For our Christmas gift to you, we're going to give you two weeks You're free. Welcome. You're welcome. Go to HuluPlus.com slash my brother and get an extended two-week free trial. That's HuluPlus.com slash my brother. Go get into Hulu Plus now and entertain your family. And you may be like me and sit there and think, oh, I've done Hulu before. But trust me, man, the amount of back uh, catalog they've got now, it's incredible. Well, you say so you're watching TV, uh, HuluPlus.com. You're watching this stuff streamed on your, your Xbox 360 or what have you. But you get a little... You get, get a, a little, snack attack. Get a little peckish. Let me snack reach in, attack. Reach in my drawer of butt junk. I have an insane amount of Nature Box snacks, and I'm ready for the holidays. They basically delivered um, French French toast granola. I have salted caramel pretzel pops. I have. Should I just go downstairs and get some Nature Box? We can bring. Yeah, them well, let's dirty. stop doing this stupid nature, show. Nature doesn't sound tasty. I want to eat my big bag of cheesy crackers. You're stupid, Le- Griffin. Puffs. You're stupid it's, for Christmas. It's the new cheese snack from Shia LaBeouf. Don't be an <laughs> idiot. This isn't rabbit food, you idiot. You yeah. stupid no, butt face. There's just no trans fats or high fructose corn syrup. It's not artificial. It's just real natural snacks that you can enjoy and it ships to you for free monthly like a subscription service you can switch up your snacks whenever you want they they, each one comes in like a nice stay fresh pouch you can reseal when you're done eating not that you ever will use the box afterwards for i don't know dioramas or whatever you want diarrhea (laughs) use it for diarrhea (laughs) you won't get diarrhea from these snacks guaranteed but you might get them from your buff puffs Buff Puffs, actually, that's like their guarantee is that they will give you diarrhea. They're like um, they're like the joke candy from Harry Potter that you eat to get diarrhea to get out of school. Your first order of Nature Box is going to be 50% off. Thanks to us, you're going to use the promo code MYBROTHER, that's all one word, at naturebox.com. You're going to get your first order 50% off. Keep your hand out of the vending machine because they'll get stuck and you'll lose it. And it'll pull over. A lot of people die from vending machines every year. That's actually what happened in that movie, 128 Hours. Is that the right number of hours? <laughs> that was the extra hours. That was the, the, the sequel. Um, we got a personal message here from Hamish. Hamish. It's going out to Richard. Dear, dear Hamish. Travis, will you read this one for me? Because I feel like you, yeah, you this do. message is for Hamish. I mean, it's, I said that stuff already. It's from, but I'm trying to set up an all, okay. you know, a certain yeah. feeling. In get the a air. vibe, get a rhythm. Oh, yeah. Let me start over. This message is for Hamish from Richard. Dear, dear, a.k.a. Hamish, a.k.a. USC Heavy Boy, a.k.a. Weeaboo Dad. Wish you, you guys are secretly making us say racist stuff. We'll never forget yeah. you. Wishing you a very... Oh, goodness heavy gracious. boys. Keep, heavy boys keep taking all my jobs. A very GVCCI birthiversary. I think it's supposed to be Gucci. Okay, a very Gucci birthiversary and a custom prime 24th year. Real proud of you for getting over that unemployment thing you are doing and con, uh, and con cats in the cradle ulations on your dad ending his tours. Expecting big things from you in 14. Lots of love from your boy, Rich Dog. Okay, Th- okay, listen. Listen, Richard. If we just gave a secret order to assassinate the president, <laughs> we will never forgive you. We, we, cannot, we cannot be party to that. Uh, Wait, did he say... Gucci birthiversary or GVCCI birthiversary? We just activated a, a very, very racist splinter cell somewhere. This is completely untenable, but we, we gotta do... kill all the heavy boys! Oh no, <laughs> no. not oh, again! Not that language, please. I have to go into hiding now. It's candle nights. Uh, uh, happy birthday, Richard. Happy birthday, no, Hamish. Hamish. Happy birthday, Hamish. And happy losing your money to us, Richard. <laughs> and ha- happy assassination of a public figure, Richard. <laughs> Uh, got another message, Griffin. Who's it? Who's it for and from? This one is for Andrew Considine and Hannah Beckman, and it's from Hannah Beckman <gasps> and Andrew Considine. Did we just get conned a bit? Rabbit hole. Uh, happy birthday to Hannah from Andrew and Andrew from Hannah, and to all the other November babies out there. Missed it. Oops. Missed it by just, that just, much. Just we are touch. almost in the next month that we almost missed it by. 
uh, uh, Hannah is a historic preservationist out of Buffalo NY. And she An- protects buffaloes. And Andrew is a graphic designer in Erie, PA. And what is that? Is that Pennsylvania? Yeah. Is it? Yeah. Is it, no, it's Pa. It's Pemain. Uh, <laughs> and although they live apart, their favorite thing to do is listen to Mim Bim Bam together. Thanks for the Even laughs. though I know how very far oh, apart we are, it helps to think we might be listening to the same great show. Griffin. Thanks for the laughs. Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> and happy birthday to us. Also, you both owe us $50. You both owe us, you both owe us $50,000 if we're going to pay for the rights. That was not fair use. It was not parodic because it was not funny. <laughs> Do you think it's okay to finish someone else's food? Do you have a fight with your friend over whether or not he should wear his Phillies garb to a Colorado Rockies game? Does your wife want to keep a chamber pot in her art studio? If so, please do not write in to Judge John Hodgman. I heard all those cases already. Judge John Hodgman is the show where I, John Hodgman, adjudicate disputes between real people calling in over the internet, and I tell them who is right and who is wrong over such important issues as, is a machine gun a robot, and is it okay to go through the garbage at the Canadian House of Pizza and Garbage? Bail of Jesse Thorne rounds out the cast for a fun-filled podcast of judgment and justice. Kind of two of the same thing, actually. Judge John Hodgman, take a listen if you do not mind. I order it. Come visit the courtroom. It is open to all and located at MaximumFun.org. Uh, here's another question from, uh, let's see. Mm, here we go. Dear my brothers, what is the history, genesis, if you will, of candle nights? Would you say it's the next step in the natural evolution, the so-called war on Christmas? Or rather, does it represent the satirical and ironic sentiment that has saturated popular culture for the last couple of decades? There is nothing... Oh, I'm I'm kind of angry now, so you've just made me angry on my favorite holiday. There's nothing satirical or ironic about candle nights hey, at Scrooge. all. Hey, Scrooge. How's, how's your candle how's lights, your candle Scrooge? Lights? Jeremy, I hate to come at you like this. Here's what Candle Nights is all about. I'll, I'll sum it up for you in in direct terms. Candle Nights is about stripping away the the religious boundaries that have have defined this holiday season, and instead mm-hmm. saying, "Hey, we all just want to be happy together for a yeah. couple weeks. Can we just have a nice candle?" It lights? is. It is. It's the end of the war on Christmas, is what it is, because like it's kind of like when it's the Geneva Convention of the War on Christmas. When right. rebel and Union soldiers got together. And they did that, the Treaty of Versailles, Mm -hmm. and they like patched things up, and they're like, it's time for a new America where the two of us can work together. Maybe we'll have a little bit of slavery. Maybe Mm -hmm. we could have just like a little bit of slavery on the side. And Winston Churchill negotiated the deal. Give us just South Carolina to just still run rampant and go crazy. crazy. Give us Florida to just like do some experimentation with like how a state can possibly work. Give us those two states and then like we'll do the rest. Yes, we will abolish slavery in the other like 14 states that we had we had peace. We're going to keep a light amount of tasteful slavery. We're going to keep a light amount of so- slavery in South Carolina, Florida. We are just going to make it the wasteland. They can do what they want. They're going to get super hot. Crimes but good gonna- news, they can have Disney. They can have Disney. Give us just a place where just like give us a George Zimmerman Wonderland is all that we want. <laughs> And if we do that, then we'll do the rest of the other stuff. And then they came together, they agreed on it, they shook hands, and then they had a new, arguably not as great, but definitely more stable America. That's what Candlelight says. It's not as good as any of the holidays, no. but it's better than no holiday. But you know what it is? It's not gonna. is? I'm not going to see people on Facebook saying like, oh, I don't see why we have to say Merry Candlelights. Candlelights isn't for another two weeks. Christmas is two days closer than Candlelights, so maybe we should just... It's or like, someone saying like, I can't believe you said Merry Candle Nights to me. Say, it's like no, right. it's all encompassed. It's all it's, of it. It begins exactly when you want it to. It ends when you tire of it. Yeah. <laughs> it's cast it's it the most wonderful holiday because it's like a choose your own adventure holiday. Who is the who is the like like Brazilian like governor dude that was like, guess what? Christmas holiday kicks off like middle of November officially because we want people to be happy. We want you to have like a super super long Christmas time. Like that guy is is the Pope of Candlelight. You know, the weird thing about, uh, it it pops off in the UK early. Like, we were there in the uh, mid to late November, pre-Thanksgiving, and they, it was they already... They have Thanksgiving. It's, I know, I know, there's no wall. There's no barrier. There's no barrier They to go it. into pre-pro on the Doctor Who Christmas special in, like, late July, and then they have to start doing it then. They it's have crazy. to. Uh, 
Um, so that is that is where Candle Nights comes from. Griffin, do you have a hot Yahoo popping off, or should I read another question? I have a hot and ready Yahoo to pop off for you guys. <laughs> he has a five dollar hot and ready Sent Yahoo. Sent by Nick Key. Also, it is Jermaine. Hear me out. You're gonna get angry. Uh, thank you, Nick Key. It's by Yahoo Answers user Sooners eighty three. You hear that, Trav? <gasps> yeah, Boomer. Uh, Doctor up a little Caesar's hot and ready. He asks. Yeah. Now I know a lot of you are wondering how does this fit in. <laughs> Same as like. You watch Hulu to like get through the holidays, to get through like the boring times when you need to do something. If you need to, if there's hungry times in the holidays, maybe you're not much of a chef. Um, maybe you can't make a Christmas mousse. Uh, what do you do? You roll down to the Little Caesars. You get five dollar hot and ready. Nobody is going to be impressed though if you have a plain Jane pepperoni or cheese or do they even do sausage? Um. At the hot and ready, they'll do pretty much anything you want to. What I love about be. the hot and ready, hot and ready, and no questions asked. <laughs> Rachel and I were doing a party the other the other month, and uh, we got two pizzas, and it wasn't enough to feed all our guests. And we live literally across the street from Little Caesar, so we walked in there, and they were like, "Hot and ready, you want it?" And I was like, "Yeah, I'll have a cheese." They're like, "We only have pepperoni because that's the only pizza we make here. It's the only one anyone asks for." Like. How much do we have to wait for the cheese? They said five minutes. And we said, okay, we can wait five. It's against the slogan. <laughs> so it's a hot and almost ready. We will wait five minutes to get the type of hot and ready pizza we want. So we sat down in the only two chairs because, like, longest, nobody sit. The longest first... five minutes of your entire <laughs> life. Let me, let me the staff is staring at you going, I think I'll In leave. this five-minute period, we were waiting. Two different people came into the Little Caesars, said, I would like a cheese or a sausage pizza. They said, we only have pepperoni. It'll take five minutes. And they said, oh, I guess I'll just take the pepperoni then. Like, you are eating a Little Caesars pepperoni pizza. At, it was like 9.30 How at night. How tight did they time out their evening? You, oh, not, I gotta go. I gotta I, get to the governor's mansion for 9.45. I got that ball starting at 9.45. Both, can't be late. Both people were willing to compromise, and, and it wasn't... The most shocking thing is that they compromised in front of me and Rachel, who were sitting there like, mm, tut tut, <laughs> like, mm. <laughs> couldn't kick it for five to get the. I guess you could just take the stuff off, but it will still have the 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 leavings of pepperoni. Oh, cotillion on. starts in twenty oh, minutes. God. I gotta go. Oh, it's such a bummer. But listen, you can you gotta take these pizzas, and this is something that not many people do. But you gotta take it and chop and screw it. What, what about this? Get two hot and ready, stuck them together, chop them together. Calzones. Calzones. I, I got everybody loves the Papa John's thin crust because when you get Papa John's thin crust, you get this special packet of seasoning. Mm -hmm. But I'm here to tell you, as a special candle night's gift from me to you, you can just fake that. Here's what you're gonna do. <laughs> You're yeah, reading this off a website you looked up and it has three out of five stars, so like already its accuracy is suspect. <laughs> two tablespoons of paprika, two tablespoons salt, two tablespoons garlic powder, one tablespoon black pepper, one tablespoon onion powder, one tablespoon cayenne pepper, one tablespoon dried oregano, one tablespoon dried thyme. Now mix that I don't want to put you on blast, Justin, but it's two and a half tablespoons Yeah, of somebody paprika. Just, somebody just made that. They finished it after you started saying dried thyme. They were like, let's make this up, and they tasted it, and he said, I've been lied to by them. I also want to throw out, on this website, it lists the prep time as five minutes. <laughs> well, Five yeah, minutes. A lot of Which one's oregano again? There's a lot of measuring going on. But you get that, make that into a container. I had a container of that for a long time, uh, and I'm out now. And but now I'm gonna. Make, I know what somebody's getting for candlelight. What did you put that? I, I fess up. Time. Here comes Taxi Cab Confessions to the McElroy Brothers. Tell me exactly the kinds of foods you would put this homemade Papa John <laughs> seasoning on. Your father Johnny's uh, off brand well, seasoning. Okay, pizza. Yeah. Obviously. Pizza. Yep. Centric hot pockets, <laughs> Italian meatball hot pockets, because those are basically you just, you just pizza hot Let him finish. Let him finish. The of sadness. Let him finish. Uh, chicken. Uh huh. That could actually be all right. I could beef. Uh -huh. well, uh, chicken and beef pizza. Uh huh. And That's not a thing. Pizza. That's it. There wasn't like a. You didn't make like a pasta once, and you didn't try and experiment. You didn't put it on pizza. Donuts. I mean, it's good and everything. Did you make yeah, quesadillas once? And you're like, let me just pizza dias. No, it's in. It's like a. It's like a pizza seasoning. I put it in a jar that I wrote pizza seasoning on the top of it, <laughs> and there, that's it. That's the whole thing. That's the whole kit and caboodle. Go make that seasoning, and you'll be like, wow, this is a very convincing. Here's my, here's replication. my seasoning. Ready? Put some put some veggie oil on hot. Get it hot. Get it to where like you put a chopstick in it, you get a steady stream of bubbles, but it doesn't like go crazy. And then you gotta bread some artichoke hearts, throw those in there, slap that on your pizza. Merry candle nights. Hello and happy candle nights to the three wise brothers. I seek advice regarding how to handle tiny holiday celebrations. Oh, do we? Do we? Do we, do we, do we, do we do? 
Oh, God. Each year, our extended family candle nights party has five to eight people. But due to a perfect storm of scheduling conflicts, I'll be the only person traveling to my parents' place. Do you have any advice as to how to celebrate the most joyous of times with only your parents? That's from Jim in Jersey City. P.S. There will be a limit of two games to ticket to ride. You yeah. have to open everyone's presents that aren't there and claim them <laughs> as your own. Yeah. Oh, Susan missed it this year? This is mine. I, These are mine. Now I have a foot massager. <laughs> I have three foot massagers because our parents aren't creative with the gift giving. I think... How do you... I, broader question. How do you do anything with only a party of three people? Yeah. Oh, let me throw this out. Excuse yourself to the bedroom several times with several costume changes. Come back as your brothers and sisters routinely. I will throw that out as well. I, <laughs> but out, of, out in the trash. Where oh, what's that? I think Susan needs me in the bedroom. <laughs> Hello, mother. Are your parents senile? Because you could pull this off. You could say, hey, good, good news. Everybody showed up, but they're waiting in the bedroom. They're very shy. They don't want to come out all together. Gaslight your parents in... <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you could do like a Groundhog Day ask thing and keep waking up in the morning and reset it back. Good, to rate yourself one to ten. How good are you at puppetry <laughs> <laughs> and ventriloquism, Darlene? She's in the kitchen. I'm doing fine, Mom. I'm making oh, you fine. fun with the cookies. I'm making your favorite sweet potatoes. Um, are we talking about a weekend? Or are we talking about a night? Because we need to figure this out hour by hour. Because like. Two games of Ticket to Ride, if they're contentious games, maybe an hour and a half each. Can you even do Ticket to Ride with three players? Uh, and then you're going to be drinking game. So that's yeah. three hours. Drink, 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 drink. That'll be the last four hours. So we have seven hours of the day spoken mm -hmm. for so that's, far. That's finished. If uh, we are assuming, if you go to bed at eight o'clock, which you're going <laughs> to have to do, because there's not going to be any stuff and you're going to be like super daylight drunk by eight o'clock. I would suggest that you guys maybe don't stay at a house. Like, don't be... Oh, that's I, good. I think don't be at the place where you've had like big family Thanksgivings together. Like, I think maybe why don't you go to like a movie together? A lot of people go to Christmas Day movies. I did not realize this until I was working at the paper on Christmas Day once. What's up? I also worked at the paper on Christmas mm -hmm. Day, and they said go to the uh, movies. There's people there all the time, and, get, and I was like, wow, this sounds like a friggin' hot lead. I got to get out there. And you're right, bust this story wide open. <laughs> so I went and walked walked up to the line of people, and uh, apparently, I think they were as surprised as I was that their movie going was newsworthy. <laughs> But I did ask each of them, like, so what you seeing? Or, or you could do something very similar and do what I like to call real holiday TV, which is you and your family wander around the neighborhood and look into people's houses and watch them experience Christmas. See how many people they have. See if there'd be room for eh, three more. Yeah. And then just duck in there. I couldn't size. help but notice your table wasn't quite full yet. That could is you a, see two, maybe three? That is a big bowl of dip for just four people. <laughs> yeah. Looks like you could easily feed seven. You always have leftovers, you know? Always yeah. have leftovers. Um... Man, can you recreate that scene in Home Alone where he tries to make it look like like a rockin' house party is going on to keep the burglars away, but you do that, and maybe the other people that you're that you are uh, handling are your family members, and also right when you finish getting that set up, do like a bunch of mescaline, and then maybe the illusion <laughs> will be complete. Uh, complete. You could stand in our house, Jim. Just come, yeah, on, come on over. Yeah, leave two parents, and then they look and go, well, "What do we do?" <laughs> they can come over too. Yeah. Uh. Guys, I'm so happy to be here with you two. I'm happy to be here too. Oh, well, I'm going to leave tomorrow. You are so. leaving tomorrow. That's true. Uh, Candle Knight's question. I'm 25 and just moved to Wisconsin to start my first full time job. Because of this, I won't be able to head home for Christmas this year. First time I won't be able to make it. My parents and oldest sister live in Southern California, where I grew up. So, oh, Cal, babe. Yeah. Wow, that sucks. Redondo, what's up? Uh, I'm really sad that I won't be able to spend Christmas with him this year. I'm heading to a friend's place in Chicago, which is awesome, but it just won't be the same. What are some awesome things for me to do this Christmas season to stop being sad that I won't be able to see my family for this for the holiday this year? Um, you could cry a bunch. You could cry. Don't talk to your parents because they're just going to make you feel guilty about it. Well, okay. You could. I don't know what your technology setup is, but you could just like FaceTime the whole day and feel like you're there. Travis, how are you handling not being able to see your family? Oh, I'm going to pretend like you guys are dead. Like, there's been a nuclear strike here in West Virginia, and y'all dead to me. Uh, no, I mean, probably phone calls and um, yeah, drinking. Like, yeah, I might screen that one. <laughs> Ow. I'm just saying, like, we... Is, can Teresa hear us? I mean, eventually, yes. We are clearly the way better family to kick it with. Listen, don't I know? Um, I would say... Just uh, kidding. No, if I'm just saying I love, my, I love listening. my, I love my in-laws. They're really terrific. It's a great family. I think I met them once. Yeah, they're great. I, I mean, here's the thing. What you got to do is this is your opportunity to make some new 
holiday traditions for yourself. So maybe your friends decorate cookies and watch Die Hard, and that's like your Christmas thing. What you don't want to do is spend the day trying to recreate traditions oh. that you and your family did. What would be worse than that? Like, yeah. you know, guys, in my house, we stop it. We always watch them up at Christmas Carol, and then we sing songs for the, the neighbors. The governor's like, no. cat is a crazy cat. <laughs> what are yeah. you? What are you doing? Start your own thing and make it like really based around the fact that you're young and you could do whatever you want. So make it like a drinking game set up around Charlie Brown Christmas. You know what I mean? Make it a fun thing that you would never feel comfortable doing with your family. Um, if you don't, if you don't set bars for yourself as to what connotates Christmas, and that's something that I think we've had to sort of make our peace with as as you get older. Like from the time I was born until God, until I was probably like twenty one or twenty two, we would sit at the top of the stairs each Christmas yeah. morning. Sometimes my parents would put a string actually across the top of the stairs, the note on it says "Don't go downstairs," even though we all knew the rules pretty well, mm -hmm. and we would. You know, wait for them to say, come on down. My parents get a cup of tea or whatever. And then we would rush downstairs and open our presents. And like, that was our baseline of Christmas. And so I think like that 22, and 19, we thought that was and like, like 16. We thought that was like fully normie, norm McDonald yeah. behavior. Yeah. And that was our, but that was like what we thought of as Christmas. And like the long, the, the further I get away from that, the happier I am just to like, you know, be with people that I like yeah, and just do fun it up stuff. And like, and, you with, know. Well, with Justin going to the Smurls, too, now it started, like, instead of waking up at, like, 7 a.m. and tearing into stuff, like, we get together at, like, noon, 1 o'clock, and, you know, very casually, like, go to town. And it's, you know, it's that's the thing is traditions are what you make them. And every year, you know, it's your own setup. And I think you can stress yourself out and make yourself really sad by saying, like, Oh, I can't recreate these things, but like maybe this is the year that it's your Christmas. Yeah, you know. Yeah, do fo when in Rome, Let, follow their suggestions. Yeah, on man, Chicago's an awesome town. I bet you could find not, some awesome Christmas stuff. Not from November to March, it ain't. Here's a fun thing to do in Chicago: try not to die. <laughs> try not to die from either the hailstorm of actual hail or bullets from guns. <laughs> Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas Chicago. Chicago. You were great in the 80s when they made all those movies about you that were all set in Chicago, and then global warming and global gunning happened. <laughs> because of global gunning, there was that one, there was that, the, the El Nino came, the El Nino of guns, and then everyone had one. Merry Christmas, Chicago. Please stay safe. Stay indoors. <sighs> no. Uh, Griffin, do you have any more Yahoos? I want to be done because, like, I just want to get back to spending time with our whole family, and and you know, I think we've given people the greatest gift of all, which is fifty minutes of our time. Yeah. Um, this one was sent in by Ira Ray. Are you Ira Ray? Who wants to know? I caught you by surprise. I like actually saw you. Like, oh, gotta whoa, get it. Whoa, whoa. Uh, thank you, Ira Ray. He peed a little when that happened. Uh, oh, this one's uh, by Yahoo Answers user Racy Lady, who asks, alternative to Chris Kringle. Has anyone any ideas on Christmas presents other than personal or Kris Kringle? Would like to use something new for the family. From President Obama. That might be good. You're talking about different sources from which presents could have Oh, you could come. do like alternate person. So like to Travis from Evil Travis from Other Dimension. You're going to have to build a lot of fiction around that though. I think there's got to be an easier solution. Okay, to Travis from the ghost that watches you while you sleep. Do you guys know that if you space out while Griffin's reading the question and then jump back into it, it's kind of hard to. You can turn it into a game. It's sort of like you use context clues to try to walk backwards to the. Like in Paycheck, where let's, he like has to go back and put the machine Travis, together. Travis, without giving him any more clues, Justin, what do you think the Yahoo answer is about? Uh, Griffin, if you put a pistol in my mouth. <laughs> I could not tell you. Well, no, because you'd have a mouthful of pistol. You sound like this. Look at me in the eyes. Look okay. at me in the eyes. Presents. Different present sources other than yourself or Ho-Ho. What can they be? For friends, family, children, neighbors, policemen. You're saying like... You're going to write something on that from tag. Okay. What are you going to write? Not yourself, not Santa, not okay, Chris Kringle. Why, why can't I write those? Because they're looking for fun extra sources. Justin, it's Yahoo Answers. Okay, why but, does anyone do but anything for anything? Reason? What you're setting up is this weird, like, contest where it's like, what did Santa get you and what did SpongeBob give you? And it's like, next year, it's like, do you want to go sit on Santa's lap? No. That would... Santa gave me a stupid sweater. SpongeBob gave me a tasty big oven. I'm losing my mind over what here. What about the spirit of generosity? Could you put that on there? How about um, you give them an empty box, and when they open it up, there's nothing in there, and you say, we donated your presents 
to poor kids. Or and this you, is from Life Lessons. If you want to antagonize your child towards somebody else for some arbitrary reason, like you get them a box and they open the box and it's full of broken glass. And then the kid's like, what? Let me check that from tag. It's from former MTV VJ Sway. <laughs> Man, I hate this. I'm only eight years old. I've never seen Sway, and I don't know Sway from Joe, but man, I hate this guy. They open the box, and there's just a head in there. It's from Kevin Spacey. It's from Kevin Spacey. Oh, see, but that was a goof. What? No, Kevin Spacey's a serial killer in real life. That movie's based on him. I'm saying maybe your parents want you to hate Sway. Maybe they have some sort of beef. Maybe they liked... Who's you're another saying, DJ? You're saying that they had a child so they could find someone to take the fall for killing Sway. Or... And they, then someday buy an ad on a podcast that activates that child to kill Sway. <laughs> Happy Christmas, everyone. We killed Sway. <laughs> we finally it. took him out. He was number two on the list Listen, right after Osama. I have, you, know, you know what's sad is Sway thought this would be the episode he played for his family. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't know what these guys are talking about. I don't know what happened We here. found him in a cave underneath Carson Daly. Here's the weirdest part when Griffin could pick any random celebrity. Sway is like one of the 0.05% of celebrities that Griffin actually has had some interaction with and kind of likes. I have, that's as what I'm saying. As I can say. I have, can tell. I have communed with Sway. Sway and I have lunch. Well, we all commune with Sway, Sway every day, Griffin, when we look Sway inside ourselves. And I, I kneel towards Sway's house. Sway <laughs> pray. Sway was the Sway and pray. Sway we planted the seed in the fertile loins of my journalistic endeavors <laughs> and my my career at large. He is a lovely human being. There's nobody on earth that hates Sway except for these two people. They were having That's how they found each other. They were having a really hard time. They met on the message board of which they were both moderators. Um, <laughs> they were having a hard time living in a world where there were only two people that hated Sway so they had to give birth to this third person that wasn't so crazy about their customs. And that's how religions begin. And that is how And that's started. the story of how Mr. Kurt Loder met his wife. <laughs> Mrs. Kurt Loder. Mrs. Kurt Loder. <laughs> Uh, thank you guys so much for listening to this very joyous uh, holiday episode of the Candle Nights 2013. We hope you've uh, had fun. If, you, if it's your first time listening to the show, uh, it's yeah, it's usually pretty much like this. So we're, yeah. if you've enjoyed it, please come back. If not, we're sorry. Blame the person who thought you would, you would uh, uh, enjoy it, even though you obviously didn't. And we're sorry about that. Uh, I want to say thank you to Nature Box. Dot com where you can order great tasting healthy snacks at fifty percent off. Use that old coupon code my brother when you're ordering your uh, your snacks and you're gonna get uh, save save yourself some dough. You'll need it after the holidays. Uh, and you can also entertain your family this holiday season with Hulu Plus. Go to HuluPlus.com slash my brother, get a free two week free trial, extended trial bins on thousands of hit shows anytime, anywhere, HuluPlus.com slash my brother. I want to thank John Roderick and the Long Winters for the use of our theme song. It's a departure, uh, which is, you can find it on the album Putting the Days to Bed. I believe it is track 10, if I'm not mistaken. I believe it is track 10 on that Sounds LP. about right. That long play album. I also want to give a shout out um, to all of our listeners who are also retail employees. And I'm sorry about the 26th when you get flooded with gifts that people return because they did not like them. It is the saddest day of the year. Yeah. Boxing day, they call it. Because people, really? people punch each other in the box to try and, oh, the Macy's is going to run out of money. I got to get in the front of that line. Punch, 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 punch. <laughs> uh, and that's going to do it for us. Uh, uh, I think I'd like... What? I feel like we should have like a warmer send off like Well I was I was thinking we should do uh I'll get my guitar and we can do a song. That sounds terrible. Can we just say like happy holidays and we love you all and we can't wait to see you in two thousand fourteen? Stick around after the outro music and maybe there'll be a song there I'm gonna try to talk them into it don't 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 just listen through but we love you and we uh, thank you for listening to us we're, I don't know if we're gonna do another episode in 2014 if we do it's a surprise if not we'll see you in 2014 I don't want it to be like the, when the end of Thor 2 when people stuck around for the end of Thor 2 like can't wait to see what secret Marvel secrets and it's like mm, I'm Benicio Del Toro in a spaceship and you have no idea what I'm talking about b -b -b -boilers. thanks for hanging Sorry. around uh, Thanks. thank you to ha for hanging around uh, we got one we final question. We will have question. Benicio Del Toro singing the Christmas classics <laughs> after the credits if you want to stick around. <laughs> Big props to the best boy, Key Grip. You definitely want to shout out him. You definitely want to see him. Uh, this final Yahoo was sent in by Ian Steed. Thank you, Ian. It's by Yahoo Answers user Amon Aboat. Oh, <laughs> I get it. Uh -huh. uh, who asks, if, Pat oh. if Batman parents are died, then how was he born? <laughs> <laughs>
I'm Justin McElroy. I'm Travis McElroy. I'm Griffin McElroy. This has been My Brother, My Brother, Me Kiss Your Dad. Square on the lips. Happy Candle Nights. Yeah. Stay tuned for that song. Don't. It's not there. MaximumFun.org. Comedy and culture. Artist owned. Listener supported. I really can't stay. Baby, it's cold outside. I got to go away. Baby, it's cold outside. This evening has been hoping that you so very in. nice. I'll hold your hands there just like My ice. mother will start to worry. Beautiful, what's your My hurry? father will be pacing the floor. Listen to the fireplace. Really, roll. I better scurry. Beautiful, please don't hurry. Maybe just a half a drink more. Put some really records on our life. The neighbors might think. Maybe it's cold out there. Say, what's in this drink? No caps to be had out there. I wish I knew how your eyes are to like break this spell. I'll take your hat, your hair looks I slow. ought to say no, 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 sir. Mind if I move in closer? At least I'm gonna say that I tried. What's the sense in hurting my brain? I really can't stay. Maybe it won't hold out. Oh, but it's cold outside. Baby, it's cold outside. Cold. Boo. Boo, Ernst.